Hello and welcome to the Daily Royal. My name is Shelby and I have been a royal watcher for the past 10 years. In this podcast, I talk about the daily events of seven of the European monarchies. So I talk about Belgium, the UK, Denmark, the Netherlands, Norway, Spain, and Sweden. I upload Monday through Friday with occasional bonus episodes here and there. Today we are talking about all of the events from Wednesday, September 22nd, and Thursday, September 23rd of 2021. Hi guys! Uh, yep, I missed yesterday too. Um, there weren't a lot of events. I gave myself a migraine somehow yesterday. I don't get migraines very often and I've had two in the past week. Uh, which is not good and not fun. And, um, so anyway, (laughs) uh, I'm back. Hi, I have missed you all. Uh, also there has been, while not a lot of events happening, a lot of news, which is, you know, a really fun thing to have happen. So, um, November seems like it's going to be a really great month. Um, there are a lot of state visits, And there are a lot of monarchies visiting monarchies, which is, like, the dream. Um, I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to talk about those things yet in terms of the podcast. They literally have announced one of them officially, like, today, and the other one is still, like, could happen, could not happen, uh, just due to the pandemic situation in both countries. So, um... First of all, let's just talk about all the state visits we have coming up. Um, So, Queen Margrethe and Crown Prince Frederick are doing a state visit together to Germany. Uh, So, that's going to be really fun. Um, I feel like there's one I'm missing. But today... The Norwegian royal household and the Dutch royal household announced that King Willem Alexander and Queen Maxima would be doing a state visit to Norway uh, November 9th through the 11th. And then um, this is still, this is the one that's like been in, kind of announced but like isn't completely official. Um, is that King Felipe and Queen Letizia are going to Sweden for a state visit at the invitation of King Carl Gustav. Um, also rumored to be happening in November at some point. Um, you guys, I'm going to lose my mind. I'm so thrilled. I really hope, there's a part of me that really hopes they're not happening at the same time, uh, solely because I think I may lose my brain. Um, if they are, I may lose my brain anyway, because I have to tell you like this, this right here, state visits to other monarchies is like why I wanted to do this. (laughs) Um, and it's finally happening because 2020, um, and I knew I wouldn't get a lot of them. I did not expect to get two of them in the same month. Plus, I don't quite know when the Danish royal family's trip to Germany is. Let me take a quick peek. Um, Sorry, you can hear me typing. I wish I could figure out a way to not make any sound when I type. Um, So they go to Germany. Good. It's not going to load, which is just lovely. Uh, Oh, oh gosh. You guys. (laughs) The 10th through the 13th of November. (laughs) I'm going to go have a moment. I'll be right back. Okay. I have relaxed now, kind of. Um, So, yep. If you guys want to hear me lose my mind, tune back in. uh, November 10th and 11th, at least. uh, While we have two days full of different state visits. Um, Wow. I am so excited. Um, so anyway, I just thought I would share those pieces of information, ask for suggestions on how you guys would like me to cover them, talk about them. Um, because obviously like the thing about it is we're probably going to have shortened segments or like not really, but like less segments because we'll talk about the state visits between monarchies at the top or something. I don't know, but, um, I don't know.
no, it'll be an adventure. That's for sure. Um, so I just wanted to share that information ahead of time and ask for any suggestions. Please reach out to me, uh, on Instagram, on the website, any of those options that have messaging. I check my messages fairly frequently, not like every day, but pretty close to. Um, and so I would love to hear some suggestions on how to talk about these state visits, uh, because wow, I'm excited. So with all of that, we are now going to jump in to the Belgian royal family. Belgium. In Belgium on Wednesday, King Philippe visited the time trials for the World Cycling Championship, which is currently being held in, uh, well, in Belgium, but like throughout Belgium, so like in different parts of the country. Um, and it started on the 19th, which I think is Sunday, and goes through the following Sunday, so it's like a week long. Uh, world cycling event uh, with lots of different races and world championship titles. There's a lot going on. Um, so King Philippe followed in a like car the race. Um, I don't know. He was just like part of the. I don't know. It was very cool, very interesting. Um, he was in like a branded car, which was even funnier to me. Um, and then I think afterwards he met with some of the Belgian cyclists. Um, I don't know, this was like a very sport friendly event and I liked it, but it was very different than like going to a football soccer game in that like it, it isn't really something that I watch very often at least. So I really don't understand, like, I don't enjoy watching cycling. Um, I say that I didn't enjoy watching football until this year and, um, well, that happened, and then I mentioned Formula One driving on here one time, and then binged watched three seasons of the Formula One series on Netflix, which I thought was just a short documentary, and it turns out it was like three seasons, and then got very invested in the Formula One drivers' lives, um, so that was an entertaining time. Uh, so who knows? Maybe my next thing is cycling. I don't know. Um, but anyway, so that was the event on Wednesday. And then today, Queen Mathilde visited the UN house in Brussels, which is headquarters for the United Nations activity that happens in Belgium. Um, and the primary focus of the discussions that she took part in there were on the sustainable development goals. So this is kind of something that's going on um, probably in all the like UN hubs around the world um, is it's the United Nations General Assembly so lots of things are just happening um, and because it is a pandemic and the U.S. is a real crap place to travel to right now because we are pandemic central um, there are just a lot of like side events happening virtually um, from these UN cities UN buildings in other countries um, so that was, you know, obviously like part of UNGA or the UN General Assembly, UNGA. Um, and then they also took a digital tour or virtual tour of a UN office in Liberia. Um, so that was another component of the visit. Um, but yeah, lots of things. Um, it has been known that Queen Matilda is an ambassador for, for the Sustainable Development Goals. But I think she like agreed to continue being amb an ambassador. So these are like the year 2030 goals. Um, and I don't know what, what exactly happened. Um, but the secretary general of the UN, maybe just because he was like reelected or something, um, shared the sustainable development goal ambassadors, which of course include Queen Mathilde. Um, so that is what was going on in Belgium. And so now we are going to move over to the British Royal family. Kingdom. In the British royal family, there actually were no events that took place publicly on Wednesday. Um, that is 
not that there were not events, it's just publicly on social media and stuff like that. Um, they didn't share a whole lot. However, both the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge had events. Um, so Williams, I will say, was probably more of a private event. Um, he was photographed, but he was at a football game for Aston Villa, which is like his team of choice. That is who he roots for. That is who he supports. Um, so he's also president of the Football Association. So like it's kind of work, but kind of not. Um, and then at the same time, the Duchess of Cambridge held a reception to mark the year anniversary of the Hold Still Project, which is that photo collection of the pandemic um, that is now a book and an exhibit and like all the things. Um, and so she hosted that at, I think, Buckingham last night. I don't entirely know, but it looked like Buckingham Palace reception rooms. So I think that's where it was. Um, so that was the kind of events yesterday. Um, and then today the Duke of Cambridge took part in another event as president of football association. Um, he focused on the launch of the fan led review hosted by the football association, um, all about English football. So this includes like how to support grassroots and smaller local clubs, um, you know, from from the top, from the bottom, kind of everywhere, like how to support them. Um, so he did most of this at the Dol Dolwich Hamlet Football Club. Um, and then so he spoke to some of the players of the club and then also fans of just football in general, of course, about the future of what English football will look like. Um, and I think this is a way to build off of the momentum that being in the Euro Cup final brought them, um, you know, giving them that support, um, and giving the fans, like, a chance to share where they want the game to go. Um, so that is what was going on in the British royal family, I do want to quickly talk about the BBC documentary um, that was premiered yesterday about the Duke of Edinburgh. Um, so this was a pretty fantastic documentary. Um, so of the participants, it was all of... Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip's children, all four, um, and all of their grandchildren except for um, Edward and Sophie's youngest son, James, because I think he's 12 or 13, so just like a little still too young, um, but Lady Louise was um, in the documentary quite a bit, actually, um, so it was all four children and most of the grandchildren. Um, which I'm just having this weird moment right now in realizing that all four of those children, of Queen Elizabeth's children, only had two children each. Weird thing that I just had a realization of. Anyway, um, this documentary was, it was started to be a BBC documentary um, about the Duke of Edinburgh being 100. So... For example, the Duke of Cambridge actually recorded his segments before Prince Philip passed away, um, which made it harder to watch um, the ones who had done their interview prior to this moment um, versus, you know, the ones who have done it after. But certainly a lot of the qualities were still the same. It was just very well done, very, um, touched on the personal, touched on the, the support that he gave to the queen, um, in the service that he did for the British people, English people, British people. Um, and so it was just really beautiful. If you can find it, I highly recommend watching it. I know I found it on YouTube. I don't, I highly doubt the video is still there anymore, um, just because the BBC does take things down very quickly um, for copyright infringement, so I would imagine that video won't be up 
now, 24 hours later. Um, but I just wanted to talk about it, that it was amazing. Um, and if you can find it, please find a way to watch it because it's really, really good. Um, so that is what was going on in the British royal family. And so now we are going to move on to the Dutch royal family as there have been no events in Denmark. Um, there have been some announcements that we have already talked about, but there have been no actual events for the past two days. So with that, we are going to move over to the Netherlands. The Netherlands. In the Dutch royal family, things have actually been very quiet for King Willem Alexander. There have been no events shared on social media. Um, I'm just realizing now that I did have a lapse and totally forgot to check their website, which is not a super common thing, but definitely has happened. Um, Let's see, today is the 23rd, so I need some, okay, so I haven't missed too much, so there was a farewell audience for the ambassador um, from Israel, but other than that, that is the only thing that I, like, missed officially, I think, um, at least that's what, the only thing on the website, so that was what King Willem Alexander has been doing, but for the past few days, um, Queen Maxima has been in New York um, at the United Nations General Assembly. So she is doing this in the capacity she holds as the UN Secretary General's Special Advocate for Financial Inclusion and Development, or Inclusive Finance and Development is probably the actual term. Um, so she will go to UNGA every year. Um, last year was obviously the exception because pandemic, um, but she goes to UNGA every single year. And, um, especially since she was named as the special advocate. Um, and so she was taking part in a lot of different meetings. Um, she presented her annual report to the secretary general. Um, she met with the minister of finance or minister of foreign affairs, one of the two, for... Oh gosh, it was an Asian country. Um, I don't, I don't remember where now. Um, let me see if it's gonna talk about anything here. Um, September twenty third. Do, 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 do. Um, okay. Yeah, so it doesn't say in this readout. Um, but she she took part in a lot of different meetings today, um, which this is what UNGA is. It is where a bunch of the government and world leaders come together and talk about world issues. There are like main sessions and then there are all these breakout side meetings that are happening at the same time, um, which is, of course, hugely important. So that... Um, is what Queen Maxima has been doing. It does say that today was her last day um, in New York, so I expect that she will be back in the Netherlands tomorrow, perhaps. Um, let's see if... I know she doesn't have any events scheduled tomorrow, but let's see when her next scheduled event is. My guess would be Monday. Nope. Nope. Saturday. It's on Saturday. Um, so she will probably come back tomorrow and then has that event on Saturday. So that is what has been going on for the Dutch royal family. And so now we are going to move over to the Norwegian royal family. Norway. Norway. 
Norway has also been relatively quiet. They had no events on Wednesday, um, and then today there were a couple of different things. So King Harald today received the credentials from the new ambassadors from Denmark, Latvia, and Jordan. Um, I would just like to file a unofficial official complaint with the Norwegian royal household because I would like to see photos of these because I want to know what they look like. This is the one that I cannot compare to anything else because I don't think I have seen King Harald receive ambassadors with photos um, this whole time. So I would just like to see it so I can compare and contrast to the other six royal families I talk about. Thank you. Anyway, um, no, I, you guys, I doubt any royal household listens to it. If they do, hi, uh, I hope you like what I say. And I'm really sorry if you don't. But, um, no, I doubt it. Anyway, um, so that happened today. And then also today, Crown Prince Akun and Crown Princess Matamarit hosted a lunch to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the Crown Prince Couple Foundation. Um, which is a foundation that was created after their marriage or maybe on the day of their marriage. I'm not entirely sure. Um, and I believe this is a piece that was supposed to happen on their 20th wedding anniversary, which is, I think, August 25th. Um, however, could not happen due to Princess Ingrid Alexandra, Ingrid Alexandra um, having a positive COVID test. So, um, anyway, I think this is the rescheduled event. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I do think that is the case. Um, so that is what they were up to today. Um, they released a really cute photo of the two of them with that event as well, um, which I appreciate. And, um, yeah, so that is what was going on in Norway. Uh, not a whole lot, although there is quite a bit going on, um, I think throughout the next couple of days, um, or Friday. However, um, I am still going to keep my normal schedule. I know I've only done like a few episodes this week, but I'm going to, um, take Friday off still and record on Sunday again, um, and just go back to a normal routine that way instead of like confusing myself even further. So I am going to, um, report all of the weekend events that we have over on um, Monday's episode. So that is what was going on today in Norway. And now we are going to move over to the Spanish royal family. Spain. Spain, the forever busy always has engagements country. I swear they barely miss a day a week. Like, I don't even think they normally miss a day. Uh, there's always something. And these past few days are no exception. Um, so on Wednesday, King Felipe visited the, <laughs> um, I don't know why I find this funny. I think it's just because like, it's such a specific topic. Um, but he visited the International Fair of Olive Oil and, um, like, their production, basically all related, like, companies to olive oil production, bottling, etc. Um, and so, I don't know that a lot of people know this. Uh, so this is, like, my Spain fun fact. So Spain is actually up there in terms of production of olive oil with Greece and Italy. I don't know if they are the highest, but they are certainly up there with Greece and Italy um, because they all have that same climate for olive growth. Um, and so Spain produces a lot of olive oil. Uh, I personally, at least I believe, um, I have Spanish produced olive oil um, from Whole Foods. Thank you, Whole Foods, for having um, fun food. I also have um, Nutella that is like Belgian Nutella from Whole Foods. Um, I really hope this is not a marketing ploy because I just enjoy collecting things that say made in, made in, you know, made in Belgium, made in Spain, etc. It's just really fun for me. Um, so anyway, um, that is... 
it was a really cool event. Um, you know, as it, with pretty much every sector of the world right now, COVID has, of course, made an impact on the olive community, uh, the olive oil community in terms of production and um, harvesting, etc. So this is, of course, I think that is why um, Felipe made this trip, um, because it is a pretty important piece of Spain's culture um, that has been struggling. So that was King Felipe's event yesterday and today, or no, sorry, uh, still yesterday, oh boy, <laughs> uh, Queen Letizia attended the annual annual World Cancer Research Day conference um, that it was put on in partnership with the Spanish Association Against Cancer, um, which is an organization that Letizia is honorary president of. Um, so this is an event that happens every year, and Queen Letizia typically will open this event um, to talk about the importance of the things that are about to be discussed. Um, so this is an event that holds roundtable discussions and is very... Um, it's very scientific and very intense, um, and I listened to it last year. Um, I did not this year. I have not yet watched it, um, but I might still. I don't know. The level of things that I am letting in um, is decreasing a little bit as my life has changed quite a bit over the past month, um, and so like I'm not able to live stream all the things that I used to be able to live stream. Um, so today, um, so that was the event yesterday. And then today, I really want to talk about the event from today. And I don't know why, because I don't want to actually talk about the event from today. Um, so for those who aren't aware, um, in the Grand Canary Islands, um, or in the Canary Islands, which is um, off the coast of Africa, but is a part of Spain. Um, there has been a volcanic eruption going on for the past week, basically. Um, I think it started on Monday or Sunday. And um, it's from a volcano that hasn't been active in 50 years. Um, and so there's a lot of destruction that it's leaving in its wake. Um, it's pretty intense. And um, King Felipe has been keeping up with it. There were news reports every day that King Felipe is talking to the government officials in La Palma, which is the island um, that the volcano is on. And he had been kept aware of the situation. So Today, um, they canceled all of their events that were scheduled um, and instead visited La Palma um, to talk to residents and rescue emergency services, um, the Red Cross. So because this thing has been erupting for days, um, its destruction level is extremely intense. Um, People have lost homes, everything, um, and uh, it's just pretty terrible. It, it's actually really terrible. It's really sad. Um, and so today, they were able to speak to some of those people who are now who were able to escape uh, and flee that the destruction zone. Um, and are in a shelter in a safer area on the island. Um, they also were able to uh, take part in a emergency planning meeting. And then uh, after that, they went to um, the area that is most destroyed. Um, so they obviously, because this is still an active volcano situation, uh, they couldn't like do much of a helicopter tour. There's a lot of smoke, obviously, from, you know, fire spurting from the earth, essentially. I mean, it's a lot more intense than that, but um, there's a lot of smoke. There's a lot of lava uh, and there's just a lot of destruction. 
And so they kind of walked some of the perimeter of that destruction right now, like what is deemed the safe area. Um, and we're able to see some of that destruction and again, talk to people who have just had their entire lives impacted by this. Um, and so that is what they were up to today. Um, obviously a huge, uh, event, tragedy, all the things. Um, and so they were able to, you know, keep themselves informed. Uh, King Felipe and Queen Letizia both made statements to the press, um, talking about the impact that they've seen, um, and the things that they've, they've seen today, um, and just continuing to give hope as much as possible to this ongoing situation. Um, so that is what was going on today in Spain and over the past couple of days. And so with that, we are going to move over to the Swedish royal family. Sweden. Sweden is the one country that has also been extremely busy over the past couple of days. So we will start with Wednesday. Um, Wednesday, King Carl Gustav opened a new museum called the Rec Museum, which I thought was an interesting name and very non-descriptive of like what it is uh, displaying and teaching. Um, and it turns out it's a Collective history of shipwrecks in the Baltic Sea, um, which is apparently where, like, most of the shipwrecks in the world seem to have happened, uh, which seems frightening, but they display, like, different pieces, different artifacts from these shipwrecks. Um, so I thought it was a really cool concept once I figured out what it was. Um, also very niche, very specific. And so King Carl Gustav officially opened that museum. Um, so that was the event yesterday. And then um, for King Carl Gustav. And then also yesterday, Queen Sylvia met with um, representatives from an organization that is called RISE. But it is the, um, the Swedish, uh, Swedish Association Against Incest and Other Sexual Abuse in Childhood. Um, and so this is something that I love about Queen Sylvia that she talks about and takes part in conversations about this event, this type of abuse in children. So obviously she is very child focused. Um, she started an entire foundation focused on children's rights. Um, but like she doesn't shy away from the horrible pieces of conversation, such as, um, incest and sexual abuse and all of the things that, like, at least in my life, I was taught were not a thing you talk about. So that was her event yesterday, a very impressive event. Um, and then also yesterday, uh, Crown Princess Victoria and Prince Daniel visited Govleberg County, Gavelberg? I don't know. Um, so this was stop number nine, I think, on the Swedish royal family's visit to the 21 Swedish counties. Um, and so these are starting to develop a pattern. Um, they first took part in a meeting focused on the impact of the pandemic um, from a medical perspective um, in the county. They also visited a university focused on the impact then that uh, the education sector has had. Um, they also learned about a study there that the university is doing um, focused on working at home um, and working at home in a post-pandemic world with hybrid models and work from home completely models um, because obviously people have gotten very used to working from home um, and people are getting good at it and all the things. And so... Um, they are now researching the effects of that. Um, so I thought that was a really cool thing. Um, they learned about a development of a health app aimed at children specifically. So the 
Um, some of the things it does is give a way to um, track all the medical things like blood pressure readings, heart rate monitors, etc. But then also like gives notifications to be like, hey, how is this medicine making you feel today? So it's tracking things like side effects, symptoms, etc. And it's child focused, like child friendly. So not young children, like not five year olds, but like 13 and up can really start taking control of their own health and well-being, which I think is awesome um, as a pretty and like a child who wanted to be very independent um, and was very comfortable. Like if I needed to go to the doctor, I was very comfortable making my own doctor's appointment at a certain age um, and did and, you know, then had to go through like the, oh, well, you need your parent to be like around, I was like, oh, okay, well, we'll call her. Um, just those kinds of things were, were pretty, uh, you know, it would have been very nice to have an app, you know, I didn't have a smartphone in high school. I did in college, um, but, but not in high school. So that is what was going on yesterday. Oh, they also visited an ax factory, which like, just cool. Um, cool thing. And then today was stop 10 of the counties or county 10. Um, so we have 11 more to go. So we're almost halfway through. Um, and the next one is tomorrow. So at this point we are halfway through. Um, so today King Carl Gustav and Queen Sylvia visited Uppsala County. Um, so they took part again in the meeting ahead of the events of the day. Um, focused on the impact of the pandemic in the county. Um, they visited the university to talk about the impact of education. Again, um, they visited a local theater. So this one is a little bit different. So you can definitely tell like each couple or each royal who goes is really focusing on things that interest them or like things in public are known to support um, intensely. And so this is no different. Um, and so they visited a local theater to talk about the effects of culture or on culture of the pandemic. Um, and then they stopped with a visit to the old Uppsala church um, to light a candle with the, um, or a few candles with the priest at the church, um, which is how they seem to be ending um, most of their days, their tours. They are doing the tour tomorrow, um, so we will talk more about that on Monday's episode. And with that, I'm going to finish this episode. Uh, please check out thedailyroyal.com, the Daily Royal on Instagram, and like and review this podcast wherever you are listening. And I will talk to you all Monday. Have a great weekend. Bye.